which led us to live in different cities for a time, Lucy and I maintained a deep connection. She wasn't just my devoted spouse and the mother of our children, she remained my closest confidant from our college days. Her understanding of me surpassed all others, which made her betrayal all the more devastating. Just last week, we attended our college's alumni meeting, an annual event dedicated to our graduation 35 years ago. It's a big event with famous singers and celebrities performing, eagerly anticipated by all alumni. This year, our group had the chance to reunite and see how our classmates had changed. Lucy and I were particularly excited because we were one of the few couples who found love in college and stayed together all these years. When we walked into the event, we were bursting with pride, ready to showcase our strong relationship. Little did I know that this excitement would lead me down the wrong path. We relished reuniting with our dear friends after many years apart. The atmosphere was lively and filled with laughter. We were savoring what felt like the height of happiness, but our joy was interrupted by the arrival of a familiar face, let's call him Rick, a classmate who had always deeply admired Lucy during her college years. Lucy attracted the attention of many with her intelligence and charm, and I wasn't the only one taken with her. However, Rick stood out because his pursuit of her was marked by a sincerity that went beyond simple flirting. Despite Lucy's lack of interest, Rick was determined to win her over and wasn't willing to give up. He persistently pursued her throughout his college years, even after learning about our relationship and her love for me. I remained a confident partner, paying no heed to his advances because I knew our bond was strong. Rick and everyone else were well aware that Lucy was exceptional, but he continued to pursue her. I distinctly remember the moment when Rick found out that Lucy had chosen to marry me. One day, he approached me with a text message claiming that Lucy had made a serious mistake, expecting me to take care of her as deeply as he thought I could. Lucy and I found his immaturity and idealism amusing and just laughed it off. After that incident, we no longer crossed paths with Rick and heard nothing about him, assuming he had finally moved on. However, to our surprise, on the day of the reunion, Rick approached us again, fixated on the chapter of his life connected to Lucy. When he warmly embraced each of us, we reciprocated, but Lucy preferred a more reserved approach and chose to shake hands. As Rick's gaze unsettled her, he took a seat across from Lucy, and his unusually intense gaze attracted everyone's attention in the room. Unable to bear the tension, I asked if he had brought his family to the reunion, hoping to change the subject. To my surprise, he told me that at 40, he had been briefly married but was currently single. Rick admitted that his marriage had ended in divorce, and I expressed my sympathy. Unexpectedly, there was a bitter tone in his response, well, you should be sorry. After all, you stole my love. This ridiculous statement was accompanied by hysterical laughter. In my younger days, such provocations might have led to a physical confrontation, but now, as we approach 60, such trivial matters don't hold much weight. Rick's lack of intimidation allowed him to brush off his comments. Rick was the type of guy who wouldn't be chosen for a sports team, a brash talker whose jokes fell flat. Although everyone heard his insensitive remark, no one reacted, and a tangible discomfort settled in the air. Trying to defuse the situation, we collectively decided to ignore him. While it was clear that Lucy was particularly affected by his words, her silence spoke volumes. Nancy and I, our close college friend, recognized that Lucy was upset and took her aside. We tried to lift her spirits by advising her not to pay attention to the behavior of someone so obsessed and to enjoy the rest of the evening in peace. Understanding Lucy's tendency to overthink, we comforted her, wanting to bring back her smile. We tried to help Lucy recover and calm down. Unexpectedly, Rick approached us, apparently eavesdropping on our conversation. To our surprise, he apologized, saying he didn't want to upset Lucy, on the contrary, he wanted to remind her that she still had an admirer despite the passage of time and its impact on her appearance. I was outraged by his rude words but managed to stay composed, firmly telling him to leave us alone. Rick was genuinely sorry for the trouble, and Lucy firmly asked him to give us some space. But Rick continued to stand his ground, urging Lucy to forgive him so we could enjoy the remaining moments of our final gathering. His words touched my heart, making me realize it was time to let go of the past and move forward. This evening marked the end of our meetings with old friends and classmates, highlighting the pointlessness of dwelling on the past. Realizing this, Lucy embraced Rick, urging him to let go of their story and not return to her in the future. Holding each other, we headed to the dance floor to enjoy the celebration. As others joined us, the atmosphere became more festive and enjoyable. 
After a while, I noticed that Nancy and Lucy were in conversation, and Rick was standing nearby. He seemed to be talking animatedly and even dancing in a somewhat silly manner. Despite this, I was relieved that the earlier conflict had been resolved, allowing us to reflect on our shared history in a positive light. Throughout the evening, I kept a close watch on Lucy to see how she was feeling. I couldn't help but notice that Rick was whispering something to her, but I hoped it was nothing to worry about. Lucy responded to Rick with a smile and a nod, which eased my concerns. I figured their conversation was probably harmless because Lucy would have scolded him if it was inappropriate. Feeling more confident, I relaxed and enjoyed socializing with our friends and classmates. However, after about an hour, I realized that Lucy and Nancy were missing. At first, I didn't pay much attention because we were all catching up individually. But as time passed and they didn't return, I started to get worried. I actively began looking for them, growing increasingly concerned. I tried calling them, but they didn't answer, likely due to the loud music at the event. After waiting for about 30 minutes, Lucy finally showed up, but something seemed off. While her appearance remained the same, her behavior had inexplicably changed. She appeared like a completely different person, notably quiet and reserved, and she kept urging me to leave the event. Nancy joined us, but for the rest of the evening, they didn't exchange a word, maintaining an awkward silence. Seeing that Lucy and Nancy avoided eye contact, I couldn't help but think they had a disagreement. I kept trying to get Lucy to explain why she seemed upset and wanted to leave early, but she stayed silent. Despite my desire to stay until the end of the party, Lucy's insistence on leaving forced us to cut the evening short. During the long journey home, Lucy stayed silent, and I grew increasingly concerned about her well-being. I asked her repeatedly about her condition, but she just said she was tired and needed rest. I was anxious because Lucy, who's usually full of energy, seemed upset for no apparent reason. Not knowing the cause of her distress, I was very worried, hoping to understand what was going on. I mustered the courage to ask if Nancy was involved, but Lucy curtly replied with a no without offering any further explanation. Realizing that she needed privacy, I decided to give her space and went about my business once we got home. While many of our former classmates happily shared photos and chatted on social media about the reunion, I couldn't shake a feeling of sadness, knowing that this might be our last reunion. Lucy quietly got into bed and closed her eyes, as if she wanted to give the impression that she was already asleep. Exhausted, I finally got into bed around 2 o'clock in the morning and immediately fell asleep. I hadn't been asleep for long when Lucy woke me up sobbing, tears streamed down her face, and she sought comfort. I held her close, gently stroking her back, and asked if seeing old friends at the reunion had caused her emotional distress. She remained silent, continuing to cry. Understanding that words weren't enough, I held her tightly to show my support and understanding. Even though she didn't want to share her feelings, I allowed her to express her emotions, comforting her with my presence as she dealt with her worries. When her tears finally stopped, she confessed something that left me in shock, she admitted that she had cheated on me, not just with anyone, but with Rick. I was speechless, unable to say anything. I was paralyzed, trying to process these revelations. Images and thoughts from the previous evening flooded my mind. The last time I saw Lucy, she was dancing with Rick and Nancy, forming an unexpected trio with them. When she returned from the party with a grim expression, insisting on leaving immediately, it became clear that Nancy was aware of what had happened, which explained her upset behavior. Feeling helpless and unable to speak, I froze in place. Sensing my inner turmoil, Lucy finally decided to reveal the truth. She said that while they were dancing, Rick began apologizing for putting her in an awkward situation, especially after she had rejected his advances multiple times. He then showered her with compliments, admiring her strength in the midst of the dance. Rick confessed that despite traveling the world, he had never met anyone as extraordinary as Lucy. She admitted that his sincerity charmed her, and she enjoyed the compliments. Lucy captivated, listened as he invited her for a walk, promising that it would be their last meeting. He insisted that she deserved to hear all his thoughts about her in their purest form. Initially, Lucy declined, but he continued to press, emphasizing that it was a chance to share his true feelings. Her curiosity got the best of her, and she decided to join him, wanting to know what he had to say. Lucy went for a walk with Rick on the Serene College campus, seeking peace and quiet. During their walk, Rick shared his long-standing love for her and confessed that he considered her the most extraordinary woman in the world. Their conversation revolved around different stories, but the core of it remained unchanged. 
Lucy admitted that she had been influenced by alcohol and had foolishly given in to his persuasive words. During their walk, Rick gently held her hands, which complicated the situation and weighed on Lucy's heart. Tears welled up in Lucy's eyes, and she sought solace in my presence. She shared painful details, recounting every intimate moment between her and Rick. The weight of her confession hung heavily in the air, and each word cut deeper into my heart. She went into excruciating detail, including the moment when guilt suddenly halted their actions, compelling her to push him away. I felt utterly powerless, and I couldn't respond to her desperate plea. Trying to gather my thoughts, I asked Lucy for some time alone. Despite my request, she continued to cry and beg for forgiveness. In an effort to console her, I suggested she rest a bit, promising that we could discuss the issue in the morning. As she clung to me tightly, expressing her fear of losing our connection, I remained still with my eyes closed, lost in deep contemplation. My mind replayed the events meticulously, examining each detail until a particular moment stood out. I recalled Rick's unsettling, victorious smile when Lucy returned from their ill-fated meeting. At that time, I didn't grasp the significance of Rick's smile, but in hindsight, I realized it was a triumph on his face, as if he had finally won Lucy over. This realization flooded me with anger and disgust, overwhelming any self-pity. Sharing a bed with Lucy at that point became unbearable. After watching her fall into a deep sleep following hours of tearful sobbing, I quietly left the bed and hastily packed my laptop, wallet, and other essentials into a backpack. The weight of my emotions was heavier than ever as I made the painful decision to leave our home. Despite everything, I couldn't deny the truth, I still loved her. After 26 years of marriage, I couldn't fathom life without her. Our marriage had given us a wonderful family filled with love and cherished memories, but despite our strong bond, I knew I couldn't stay. Lucy knew me too well, and her persuasiveness would likely have deterred me from leaving if I stayed until morning. I sought refuge in a hotel and took the necessary steps to block her room and remove her from all social networks. Exhaustion overcame me as the sun rose, and I fell into a deep sleep. By 8 o'clock in the morning, my phone rang incessantly with calls from our children, who had no knowledge of the events between their parents. Lucy and I have two children, a 24-year-old son and a 21-year-old daughter, both currently attending college on the same campus. Reflecting on that fateful night, I now understand that my impulsive decision to leave Lucy had to be carefully planned. Pretending everything was normal after her betrayal was impossible. She was my best friend and the core of my soulmate, trying to act or deceive her would be futile since she knew me better than anyone else. The idea of Lucy's betrayal had never crossed my mind, so I hadn't prepared a plan for how to handle such a situation. When the children began calling me, I was caught off guard, not knowing how to respond to the truth that shattered our family. Realizing I needed to speak to at least one of my children before taking further action, I turned to my son, who typically approaches situations more calmly and maturely. With a heavy heart, I informed him that his mother had cheated on me the previous night with someone from her past, an old lover, admirer, or maybe even a stalker. I explained that I needed time to sort things out and get my bearings. This revelation shocked him to the core. The idea that his own mother could act this way was incomprehensible, making the situation even more painful. Our family had been known for its strength and love, and we had always been proud of our close bond. Our children, relatives, and friends admired our relationship. Now all of that had been shattered due to Lucy's actions. My son couldn't come to terms with the fact that his mother was capable of such behavior and kept insisting that there must be some misunderstanding between us. Desperate for answers, he kept pressing me for details, trying to understand how and why her betrayal had occurred. Recognizing the emotional toll this was taking on my son, I understood that providing a detailed chronological account would only intensify his pain and possibly hinder his ability to move on. With a heavy heart, I acknowledged the gravity of the situation and expressed my sincere hope that it was all an elaborate joke. Sadly, I had to tell him that his mother had indeed confessed to her infidelity. Although he was 24 years old and had experienced heartbreak before, this betrayal hit him hard. Seeking understanding and trust, I asked him to promise to keep this information confidential until I was ready to share it with others. To defuse the situation and avoid further questions and concerns, I informed my daughter that I would be away on a business trip for a while due to work-related stress. As a result, the calls from our children stopped. The situation was as follows, while my daughter believed I had left for work, my son and Lucy knew we were separated. In the following days, 
I dived into online research, seeking top lawyers and solutions to our situation. During this time, I stumbled upon a subreddit where men shared their experiences dealing with issues similar to mine. As I delved into these online discussions, I found stories of people planning revenge on their unfaithful partners. Though I understood their anger, I couldn't fathom seeking revenge on Lucy. Deep down, my love for her remained unchanged. To deny that would be dishonest. But despite this love, I knew we could never be together again. Trust had been shattered beyond repair, and reconciliation seemed impossible. It was painful, but our paths had irreversibly diverged. As I contemplated how to handle this challenging situation, I wasn't sure if I could overcome it. There were numerous matters demanding my attention, work, the well-being of our children, property issues, and more. Tomorrow, I have a crucial meeting with a lawyer who will guide me through the legal aspects. Lucy and I are both management consultants, but in our early 40s, we left our stable jobs. Lucy pursued her passion for writing, while I became a business consultant, primarily working with startups. As a self-employed consultant, I don't have a fixed workplace. This has led me to consider the possibility of Lucy showing up at my workplace. After careful thought, I realized that, given my working situation, it might not be easy for Lucy to locate me. Although I occasionally work from home, I also visit clients' offices. Working with multiple clients simultaneously makes it challenging to maintain complete anonymity. Nonetheless, Lucy hasn't managed to track me down. Approaching our 60s made us contemplate retirement. We'd put a lot of effort into planning our future, including saving to buy a beachfront home in the countryside. We aimed to make this purchase next year and had already identified potential properties that matched our desire for a peaceful retirement. Fortunately, we hadn't finalized the purchase of the beach house, and we were still negotiating with property owners. In hindsight, I'm incredibly thankful for this. If we had already bought the property, the situation would have been much more complicated. Just the thought is daunting. Meanwhile, Lucy has been persistent in trying to contact me since I decided to keep my distance. I consulted with a lawyer who advised me to inform our adult children about our separation. He also raised questions about property division, leading me to initially consider splitting it equally between Lucy and me. But upon reflection, I realized I needed to rethink my stance. Instead of seeking revenge by denying Lucy her share of our property, I decided to do the opposite. I believed she deserved her rightful half, as she had contributed as much as I had. However, I acknowledged that she also deserved the separation she sought. Having known Lucy for so long, I understood she'd be willing to give up her part of the property to reconcile and save our family. While the divorce papers were being prepared, I arranged a meeting with our children. I asked my son to discreetly bring my sister to a restaurant without revealing my presence. To my surprise, my daughter's reaction was intense. When she saw me, she bombarded me with questions, including whether I had cheated on her mother. After disappearing from her life, seeing her in such distress, my heart sank. But I knew I had to stay calm for the sake of the children and the upcoming revelations. Gradually, I managed to reassure her that I hadn't been involved with anyone else. Then, with caution, I began revealing the truth in pieces. It was clear that my son already knew some of it, but my daughter was hearing the full story for the first time. Neither of them was prepared for what I had to say. My daughter's world crumbled when she learned her mother had cheated on me for the past 15 days. Since I left our home, she had been staying with Lucy. Overwhelmed with emotion, she embraced me tightly and tearfully asked for forgiveness for any ill feelings she had harbored against me. In a vulnerable moment, my children pleaded with me to consider giving our marriage another chance, but I remained firm in my decision to file for divorce. It was incredibly hard to see them cry but they understood the depth of my pain and the importance of looking out for their own well-being during this tough time. My children made a sincere commitment to stand by my side. I assured them that the decision to separate was made by me and their mother alone and wouldn't affect our love and support for them. My daughter expressed concern for Lucy's well-being, explaining that she was struggling with eating and sleeping. She mentioned that Lucy had gone from crying spells to restlessness and had been calling me continuously, deeply saddened by my absence and searching for me in my client offices. But every client informed her that I hadn't shown up at their offices for the past two weeks. Sensing her mother's anxiety, my daughter bravely asked Lucy if something had happened between us that she needed to know about. Lucy responded with silence to her daughter's question, and tears continued to flow incessantly. Unable to calm down, my daughter went to her room, isolating herself and succumbing to waves of sadness. 
recognizing the emotional blow this had dealt to our children, I asked my daughter to stay home and support her mother during the divorce process. As we discussed Lucy's actions, I felt our children changing, their initial sadness gradually gave way to anger as they also felt betrayed by their mother's actions. They clearly bore the weight of the experiences and pain caused by the breakdown of our family. In this situation, we're all victims, but the blame for the destruction of our once strong family lies on one side. Despite the pain and betrayal caused by Lucy's actions, I'm determined not to let our children harbor hatred for their mother. On the contrary, I urge them to provide support during this difficult time. What happened next, however, was truly astonishing. A few days later, I received a message from Rick inquiring about Lucy's well-being. He brazenly stated that if I intended to divorce her because of her infidelity, then he was ready to intervene and take her for himself. In response, I made it clear that Lucy is a free woman who has the right to make her own choices. After our correspondence, I promptly blocked him, excluding any further contact with him from my life. Oddly enough, Rick's message didn't provoke much anger in me. I didn't want to be manipulated by this intruder. After all, I was never married to him, didn't love him, and didn't trust him. My deep connections were exclusively with Lucy, which is why her betrayal caused me such profound pain. It's not so much the feeling of insecurity that concerns me, but the emotional aftermath of her actions. If she wants to continue her relationship with Rick, it doesn't bother me. Since the divorce papers are set to be delivered today, I eagerly await my daughter's call to learn how Lucy reacted to this development. Meanwhile, I need to address a multitude of crucial issues, including property division, retirement planning, and ensuring the safety and well-being of my children. These tasks demand careful consideration and resolution as I work to establish a solid foundation for the future. Time has passed, and it was a challenging and stressful period as I worked to resolve various issues. I'm pleased to report that my divorce is now officially settled, but when Lucy received the divorce papers, her illusions about my temporary anger came crashing down. The reality of the situation hit her hard, and she struggled to come to terms with it. She had been living believing that my anger would eventually subside, and we would reconcile. However, when she received the documents, this fragile bubble burst, revealing the truth about our separation. She persistently requested a meeting with me before signing the divorce papers, convinced she could persuade me against it. She was right, and if I had agreed to meet her, her persuasive words and magnetic presence might have swayed me. Nonetheless, I decided to stand by my decision, prioritizing my emotional well-being. Conflicting emotions overwhelmed me. Despite still loving Lucy deeply and finding it painful to witness her deteriorating condition, I couldn't ignore the damage to our family and neglect my self-respect. I realized she had taken me for granted, destroying the foundation of our once strong love. As much as I wanted to save her from becoming a shell of her former self, I knew I couldn't continue living in such a toxic environment. My daughter contacted me expressing concern about Lucy's fragile state and informing me that Lucy had been hospitalized due to depression. Additionally, the financial burden caused by her actions fell on her shoulders, further reinforcing my confidence that despite the difficulty of watching her suffer, I had made the right decision for myself and our family's well-being. Lucy's refusal to take any medication or supplements to maintain her health worsened her condition, necessitating a switch to a liquid diet. Some might view my actions as apparent indifference to her deteriorating health, as those of a ruthless and selfish person. They may question whether I truly loved Lucy. To such conclusions, I respond as follows, without experiencing the profound pain of betrayal, it's challenging to fully grasp the depth of my suffering and the complexity of my emotions. Describing my love for Lucy as mere adoration would be an understatement. I cherished her, worshipped the ground she walked on, and was her biggest fan and soulmate. Nearly three decades together, she wasn't just the love of my life, but also the mother of our children. Rick, in his own way, was right. Finding a woman like Lucy is exceedingly rare, distinguished by intelligence, talent, empathy, and all the qualities one could desire in a partner. I tried to care for her and treat her as such, but her actions toward me showed no reciprocation of love and trust. The deep connections were exclusively with Lucy, which is why her betrayal caused me profound pain. It's not so much the feeling of insecurity that troubles me but the emotional aftermath of her actions. If she wishes to continue her relationship with Rick, it doesn't concern me as the divorce papers are set to be delivered today. I eagerly await my daughter's call to learn how Lucy reacted to this development. 
Meanwhile, I must address various critical issues, including property division, retirement planning, and the well-being of my children. These tasks require careful consideration and resolution as I work to build a solid foundation for the future. Surprisingly, Nancy didn't act surprised at all. She claimed to already know why we had separated. Curious, she started calling me to learn the details of how I discovered Lucy's infidelity. I informed Nancy that Lucy had admitted to being unfaithful. Nancy apologized and mentioned that she had previously warned Lucy about Rick and advised her not to spend time alone with him. Regrettably, Lucy chose to disregard Nancy's advice. But Nancy also shared a version of the story. That differed from what Lucy had told me. According to Nancy, she and Lucy were happily dancing when Rick joined them and made advances on Lucy. He kept whispering in her ear, which made me doubt Lucy's explanation that it was an apology. Nancy's account painted a different picture, casting suspicion on Rick's intentions and Lucy's involvement. Nancy expressed her dissatisfaction with Rick's advances and tried to intervene, noticing significant changes in Lucy's behavior. To Nancy's surprise, she discovered that Lucy enjoyed talking to Rick, which deeply concerned her. This complicated the situation further, raising questions about Lucy's feelings for Rick. When Rick suggested going for a walk, Lucy asked Nancy for advice, silently wondering what to do. Nancy strongly opposed the idea, emphasizing Rick's dangerous reputation. However, Lucy eventually agreed to the walk, despite Nancy's reservations. Nancy was engrossed in conversation with friends and didn't immediately notice Lucy's absence. Gradually, she realized this and became worried. She searched for Lucy and found her with Rick in an unexpected place, the college pool locker room. This contradicted Lucy's claim that they were on the lawn. Nancy confronted them, interrupting their encounter and revealing that it was her presence, not Lucy's conscience, that stopped them. Despite the painful betrayal, I couldn't help but feel proud of Lucy for admitting her mistakes to me. Knowing the truth brought some comfort, but the betrayal still weighed on my heart. I initially blamed her intoxication, but I later realized it was a conscious choice. The fact that their encounter took place far from our original location at the college pool emphasized that it was deliberate, not a momentary weakness. It was clear that Lucy's actions were intentional. After listening to Nancy, I asked the pressing question, could I consider giving Lucy another chance? I was torn. Lucy had confessed, but Nancy's revelation of the differing versions added complexity. Lucy's deception left me in emotional shock. Meanwhile, my children shared concerning news about Lucy's deteriorating mental state. She fell into deep depression and was on the brink of self-harm. Learning of her condition, I turned to Nancy for support and advice. I explained the previous phone conversation to Nancy, where Lucy told me a different story. I asked Nancy to visit Lucy and have an honest conversation. It was evident that Lucy held a painful secret. I urged Nancy to inform Lucy that I now knew the whole truth and had decided not to forgive or rebuild our relationship. I suspected that Lucy was intentionally harming herself, so her well-being became my top concern. Lucy hoped for reconciliation, but Nancy visited as I requested and updated me. Lucy was on the path to recovery from her emotional struggles, and she had signed the divorce papers, which brought some relief. In light of recent events, I found motivation to wrap up my work commitments. Instead of settling down as planned, I felt compelled to choose a different path. I decided to embark on a solo journey, seeking new experiences and freeing myself from obligations. The prospect of escaping the restrictions of a permanent residence brought me joy and promised an improved mental state. I acknowledge that I may not be handling the situation perfectly, but I'm doing my best in these unpredictable times. I can only hope for the best in overcoming this challenging period. A year has gone by, and I want to update you on some developments. During this time, it felt like time passed slowly for me after leaving our house. I stayed in a hotel for a few months and then rented an apartment while our divorce proceeded as planned. I continued to work. But I switched to clients that allowed me to work from home full-time. This change offered more flexibility and helped me adapt to my new life. Concerning our property division, Lucy received 50% of the money we had saved for our retirement home. Though it was tough to part with that money, I understood the importance of a fair split during our divorce. To ensure a fair distribution of the remaining 50%, which is rightfully mine, I decided to share it between my two children. They are old enough and independent, so having access to these funds can be useful for them. As for Lucy, she's still undergoing therapy to deal with her emotional issues. 
Nancy stays in touch with her and occasionally asks about my well-being. During a conversation with Nancy, she shared unexpected information about Lucy. It's crucial to handle this info cautiously, as Nancy still supports Lucy. Nevertheless, I'm willing to hear her perspective. It turns out that despite what I thought, there are reasons to be skeptical about how well I know Lucy. I held Lucy in high regard, considering her strong and determined, but it appears that loneliness may have influenced her decisions. According to what I learned, Lucy began communicating with Rick, and he reciprocated her feelings. Their relationship appeared to be flourishing until he found out about our impending divorce. Once Rick learned about the divorce, his behavior took an unexpected turn. He distanced himself from Lucy, leaving her confused and heartbroken. Despite her efforts to remind him of his previous expressions of love, he claimed his intentions were only for a casual encounter. He admitted he didn't want a long-term emotional relationship or marriage. Due to her strong-willed nature, this revelation left Lucy feeling betrayed and shattered her image of Rick's intentions. Their relationship seemed built on fleeting desires and empty promises rather than genuine affection and commitment. It's difficult to fathom that Lucy begged Rick for a relationship, especially given his reputation for insincerity. Rick's true intentions were exposed when he revealed his desire for only a physical relationship, disregarding Lucy's need for emotional support. He also mentioned having a roommate with whom he was content. All his apparent love and admiration turned out to be a facade, which left Lucy feeling deceived and insulted. In a cruel final statement, Rick arrogantly claimed to have achieved his goals, even boasting about outsmarting Lucy. This revelation deeply unsettled Lucy, making her realize she had fallen for his lies and manipulations. A couple of weeks ago, I received an update on Lucy. My daughter had been living with her to provide companionship and support during her battle with depression since I left our home. However, after a year, my daughter reached her limit. Lucy's behavioral changes had become unbearable. Once emotionally strong, Lucy had transformed into a person filled with self-doubt and a constant need for attention. She had become unpredictable and unstable, displaying hysterical tendencies that strained others. Despite my daughter's best efforts, living with Lucy had become impossible. This was a stark contrast to the Lucy we once knew, highlighting the devastating impact of her actions and emotional experiences on her well-being. Lucy's mental state deteriorated, leading to delirium and confusion. She had turned into a controlling and possessive mother, frequently bombarding my children with phone calls. If they didn't answer immediately, whenever my daughter tried to address Lucy's stubborn behavior, Lucy became distressed and expressed her fear of losing them. She had been deeply terrified by my departure, and my children assured her that they wouldn't abandon her. They did everything in their power to help her with her depression. But if her controlling tendencies persisted, they might need to reconsider their stance. Lucy often engaged in intense arguments with her children, accusing them of not supporting her during the most challenging moments of her life. This behavior was unfamiliar to us. The children were shocked by Lucy's unusual conduct. Ultimately, they had a heated argument with her, making it clear that her actions had disrupted everyone's lives. Our once caring, reliable, and joyful family had become fragmented and distorted. It was hard for Lucy to accept that her own children held her responsible for these events. Two weeks ago, my daughter decided to leave home. She informed me that she had done everything possible to help Lucy but couldn't put her own life on hold to care for her. I believe my daughter's decision was reasonable. It's crucial for her to move forward, just as it's essential for Lucy to take responsibility for her life. While it's natural for someone my age to find some satisfaction in seeing his unfaithful ex-wife suffer, I must admit that I felt no joy in this situation. Instead, I felt deep sadness for Lucy and her current state. Her poor decisions have led to a lifetime of suffering, and I genuinely hope she can recover her former self, regaining confidence and strength. Over the past year, I've traveled to four different countries. It has been an incredible journey, experiencing diverse cultures, savoring local cuisines, and embracing entirely new ways of life. Initially, I was disappointed to deviate from my retirement plan, which involved being with Lucy. However, I've come to appreciate the opportunity to immerse myself in various cultures and lifestyles. During my travels, I had the pleasure of meeting incredible people from various cities worldwide. Currently, I'm not involved in any romantic relationship, nor am I actively seeking one. I'm open to whatever the future might bring. To be honest, the last two and a half years haven't seen any major events, except for my extensive travels to over a dozen countries and rekindling my passion for painting. 
in the past month, I had the opportunity to reunite with Lucy after a four-year gap. The reason for this unexpected encounter was my son's upcoming wedding. He found his life partner, and two months before the wedding, he wished for Lucy and me to meet the girl's parents. At first, I was hesitant, suggesting we meet at the wedding, but I eventually agreed to accompany Lucy to this significant event. I realized it wasn't about me but my duty as a father. A week before the wedding, the girl's parents graciously hosted a dinner for us. Although I had doubts initially, I decided to attend at the last moment. It was emotionally challenging to see Lucy there. I would have preferred it to be just the two of us, but I knew I had to be there for my son, and both he and his fiancée were thrilled to see me. Her parents left a wonderful impression as kind and hospitable people. When I met the girl's father, it felt like we immediately clicked. We had a great conversation about his business, but I won't dwell on those details because I assume you're more interested in the situation with Lucy. So, let's get to the point. When I entered the room, I noticed Lucy appeared visibly uneasy. Something had changed in her, a transformation in her eyes. She was no longer the woman I once knew. Although she smiled politely, there was tension in her. It was evident that she had distanced herself from me over time. Despite the years that had passed, Lucy still had her characteristic long hair, a consistent feature of her character, but I couldn't help but notice that these four years seemed to have taken a toll on her more than I expected. As we sat at the table, it turned out that my son hadn't disclosed the nature of our past relationship to the girl's parents. This would be the first meeting for both sets of parents. While this detail interested me, I didn't anticipate any issues arising from it. Initially, Lucy was quiet in the company of others, but when she found a moment to speak to me alone, she commented on my appearance, noting that I looked healthier and more energetic, I agreed and mentioned that I had intentionally removed all toxic elements from my life. This confession momentarily surprised her, and she discreetly looked around to ensure no one overheard our conversation. She curiously inquired about my current romantic status, but I deftly evaded the question, firmly stating that it shouldn't concern her. Throughout our conversation, I tried not to focus on her but engaged with the other guests. When the evening drew to a close and it was time to bid farewell, I warmly embraced everyone present. As we were about to leave, I simply nodded to Lucy and casually told her to take care of herself. This took her by surprise, and she abruptly stood up. As I said my goodbyes to others, although things happened quickly, I believe the exchange didn't appear too awkward to the others. Surprisingly, the meeting with Lucy turned out to be quite straightforward. From her behavior, it seemed she was either startled by my presence or felt too uncomfortable for a more open conversation. Regardless of her thoughts, I found it uninteresting to delve further into this matter and departed from the gathering. As I was about to leave, my son walked me outside and kindly invited me to spend the next few days with him. Unfortunately, I declined his generous offer but promised to call him soon. With those words, I headed to my hotel. It's important to note that I no longer have a fixed place of residence. I frequently travel, and when I return, I usually stay in hotels. Transitioning to a nomadic lifestyle wasn't easy after 26 years as a devoted family man. However, over time, I grew accustomed to this adventurous way of life and have come to fully enjoy the freedom it brings. I'd like to share more news with you. I now have a life partner. Two years ago, during a trip to Tokyo, I met Ashlyn, a 52-year-old woman who had recently left an abusive relationship and embarked on her first solo journey. Our paths crossed while climbing a mountain, and we formed a genuine connection. At that time, neither of us sought a romantic relationship, so we developed a deep friendship. After my stay in Tokyo, I was planning to go to South Korea, and she intended to explore Thailand. Surprisingly, we continued to communicate over the next few months, nurturing our friendship. Recognizing our compatibility, we mutually decided to plan our future adventures together. Over the past year and a half, we've embarked on various journeys, exploring more than eight countries. We've become travel companions, prioritizing the bond that connects us over rushing into a romantic relationship. In fact, for the first two months of traveling together, we maintained a platonic relationship by mutual consent. We weren't in a hurry to know each other deeply, focusing on enjoying our discoveries and explorations while continuing to travel. My children were aware of Iceland's presence in my life but chose not to inform Lucy about it, fearing it might trigger her depression. Upon arriving at the hotel, I phoned my son to explain why I declined his offer to stay with him. I told him that Iceland had joined me on this trip, and it wouldn't be fair to leave her alone. Additionally, 
I expressed my desire for Iceland to attend the wedding as my partner. Although my son liked the idea, he also expressed concern about Lucy's potential reaction. Nevertheless, I stood my ground, emphasizing the importance of Iceland attending the wedding and getting to know my family. I suggested my son involve my daughter in the conversation to discuss the matter collectively. Thankfully, my daughter supported my decision and agreed that Iceland should meet our family. With just a week left before the wedding, we spent our time exploring the city together, giving Iceland an unforgettable tour of Kentucky since it was her first visit. Finally, the wedding day arrived as we entered the venue. I couldn't help but notice Lucy's fixed gaze on me. Lucy's reaction was intense when she spotted Iceland and me walking hand in hand to the wedding venue before the event. I had cautioned Iceland about the possibility of Lucy's unwanted behavior, but she assured me that she could handle it calmly. It was at that moment that I became personally aware of how much control Lucy still had over me following our separation. Lucy rushed toward us, swiftly grabbing my wrist, attempting to pull me aside. I firmly stated I didn't want to engage in a personal conversation with her. Lucy posed direct questions, inquiring if Iceland was my girlfriend and if I intended to marry her. I firmly replied that it was none of her business. With growing attention from other guests who noticed Lucy's tears and anger, I asked her to leave us alone. The wedding was about to begin, and her actions were disturbing the joyful atmosphere. My daughter tried to mediate and calm her mother, but Lucy stubbornly resisted. We implored her, stressing that her actions were spoiling the wedding for everyone. Lucy raised her voice, displaying her indifference to the situation. In response, my typically soft-spoken daughter intervened and became resolute. Not only did she maintain her composure, but she continued to give Lucy a stern and memorable lesson. I was taken aback by our daughter's unexpected outburst. With strong yet controlled anger, she conveyed a harsh truth that had been buried too long. She reminded Lucy that they were supposed to enter the wedding hall together as a family, instead, Lucy's involvement with someone else was seen as an act of betrayal. My daughter presented Lucy with two options, accept the situation and move on, or my daughter would ensure her removal from the wedding before it started. The gravity of her words left no room for negotiation or further disruption. As a father, I initially stepped in to protect my daughter. However, I soon realized her resilience and strength, even in the face of her own mother's actions. With unwavering determination, my daughter pointed directly at Lucy, ensuring her words carried weight. By the way Lucy was squeezing my wrist, I could sense the tension building, and then she released her grip. We made eye contact, and her face trembled, conveying a mix of anger and betrayal. After a few moments of silence, Lucy turned and left without acknowledging Iceland. To my surprise and relief, my daughter took the initiative to apologize to Iceland on Lucy's behalf. Iceland warmly embraced both of us, and I expressed my pride in my daughter's strength and resilience, referring to her as my soldier. She was visibly emotional when I used that term. Lucy had caused suffering to those around her, but she had always expected sympathy and care from certain friends over the years. Due to circumstances, my children didn't have a family home for special occasions, and I acknowledged my role in this outcome. Throughout the remainder of the wedding, Lucy grew increasingly irritated by our children's support for me. She distanced herself, often standing alone in corners or sitting by herself, appearing more distant than a groom's mother should be at such an event. She even chose not to participate in the family photo, further highlighting her sense of isolation. A few days ago, Nancy gave me a call. She mentioned that Lucy was upset that I was moving on with my life while she remained lonely. In response, I told Nancy that my children and I had reached a point where we couldn't bear Lucy's constant dramas any longer. I explained that Lucy was on her own path, and she was free to live as she pleased. My primary goal now is to enjoy the remaining years of my life in peace. I'm considering the idea of being closer to my children and taking responsibility for their family gatherings. Even though they are grown, I believe it would provide them with a comfortable and stable environment where they can come together when needed. The recent wedding made me realize that a new phase of life is approaching, where I may become a grandparent. I didn't find it necessary to inform Lucy about this, and I'm at peace with that choice. When the time is right, I'll consider inviting Ian to accompany me on this journey. Nancy shared with me concerning news about Lucy's condition, she's struggling, behaving erratically, and having panic attacks. I asked Nancy to stay with Lucy, provide support, and assured her I'd contact my daughter for additional help, as she was away. Unfortunately, Nancy couldn't stay long, leaving Lucy alone in such a distressing state. Before the next day dawned, 
my children and I received devastating news. In a moment of despair, Lucy ran into the road and was tragically struck by a passing motorcyclist. Lucy, my beloved and the mother of my children, passed away instantly. It's incredibly challenging for me to discuss. Her injuries were severe, leaving her body resembling a broken doll. While I may harbor guilt for introducing my new partner at my son's wedding, enduring Lucy's manipulation indefinitely wasn't feasible. It all stemmed from her betrayal, and no one is to blame for the path she chose.